5.30 on a Friday. Did you watch the debate last night? That's the question everybody's going to be asking. You know, 10 Democrats went at it in Houston, and the differences between the candidates were on full display. They talked about health care, gun control. The moment everybody's talking about, though, Julian Castro going after Joe Biden's age, specifically his memory loss. Every day we want you to be a part of the conversation. So today we're asking you, if you can, in one word, Describe how you feel after last night's debate. I, I really just am not sure that people are going to be able to use one word. People respond to the gotcha moments. Yes. I think the, the Castro-Biden thing was uh, uh, initially a gotcha moment. Turned mm -hmm. out that Castro wasn't completely accurate so in that. Uh, Kamala Harris calling Trump a little man and the little Wizard of Oz when you pull the curtain back. So people react to the gotcha moments, but ultimately, is it changing your mind? Are you going to vote for a person who has a funny line or a gotcha moment is in there? Is that what you base your votes on? You may win, you may <laughs> win that five-minute window, but what are you doing in terms of winning votes? So yeah. a lot of you, and please continue to let us know. All right, let's get to all of your local and national right. top stories. We call it Daily Blend. Brittany, you got a big thing going on there with an overturned vehicle. I know. We've been following it since we started the newscast at 430. An overturned tractor trailer filled with grapes causing problems in Manteca. Our traffic team was on the scene. We showed you the grapes on the side of the road. Thankfully, they are now in the process of opening all lanes. But I still have a caution flag out for you. Austin Road at French Camp Road. So if you want to avoid it completely, you can take Lathrop. If you usually take this intersection, it should all be open in a couple of minutes for you. Elk Grove, 99 in the Sacramento. Clocking in at 17 minutes this morning. If you take five, eh, it's not bad. A little bit above the speed limit, 71 miles per hour. Davis into Fairfield, 24 minutes. Fairfield into Sacramento, we're looking at 33 minutes. So traffic moving Rob Carl Mark on 80, but is it going to be a hot weekend? I think a lot of people want to know. You know, it is and it isn't. And I think this is going to be a, a, a big weather story for the next couple of days because September is going to do what September always does. We go up, we go down, we get some rain. Uh, we're going to be looking at a lot of changes within the next five days. So I'm out here in the Gilmore backyard showing you some of the beautiful plants. I've been loving the sunshine. Hopefully you have too. But you know what? It got warm yesterday. 90s, 80s, and 70s up high. It's about the same in Sacramento, but if you're outside of that uh, area uh, of the Delta Breeze, which is just barely kicking in now, it's warmer this morning. You may feel that 60s and 70s and then some 30s up high, but I want to get to the good stuff. It's going to be hot today and tomorrow. We might hit 100. We might, we might be a couple degrees below. Just focus on about 100 degrees is what we're looking at over the next two days. This is not record breaking, just so you know, but it is definitely way above average. Then we get to Sunday to Monday. A lot of wind, a fire risk up high, and then Monday afternoon, yep, I think it's going to rain. I think we're looking at some light rain, but I think the odds are going up, not down, so focus on that. Not in the morning, but Monday afternoon to the evening. Some light rain for the valley floor, and then perhaps rain switching over to snow over those mountain passes just a little bit early Tuesday morning. So I'm going through these high temperatures kind of quickly because you know the drill. It's going to be hot today and tomorrow but big changes right after that Sunday and going into next week. Walt, Kirsten. Thank you, all right. Uh, Governor Newsom has signed another use of force bill that will change the way police officers can use deadly force. Senate Bill 230 is one of two use of force bills that we've been talking about for months. It will finance new training and require police departments to update their policies on use of force to comply with the other bill signed by the governor last month which authorizes officers to use deadly force only when necessary in the defense of human life. Right now, California lawmakers are making their final push to send some big bills to the governor's desk. Today is the deadline to get those bills approved. One bill addressing wildfire safety has cleared both the House and Senate, waiting for the governor to sign it. AB 1516 would require a new ember-resistant zone within five feet of a structure in high wildfire risk areas. Governor Newsom has a month to make up his mind on this bill and others on his desk. Kirsten. All right, coming up on 535 right now, let's get to your other top stories in your daily blend. Democratic debate. Healthcare dominated the discussion last night on ABC 10 as presidential hopefuls squared off in Houston. Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders continued their push for Medicare for all, while Joe Biden argued it was too expensive. But at the end of the night, they all took aim at President Trump. He reminds me of that, that guy in The Wizard of Oz, you know, when you pull back the curtain, it's a really small dude. Sacramento sideshow. Police responded to an illegal sideshow involving four to five hundred cars last night near W and H streets. Officers tell us it was a tribute for Paul Walker's birthday. 
Walker was killed in a car crash in 2013, and he was best known for his role in the Fast and Furious movies. Deadly Boat Fire Crews finally brought the wreckage of the Conception to the surface of the coasts of Southern California. This 10 days after a fire killed 34 people on board. Investigators now say all six crew members were asleep when the fire started. Federal law requires at least one person stay awake in case of emergency. I'm Carlos Herrera at Cal OES headquarters. California Preparedness Day is a day meant for us to prepare for natural disasters that are bound to happen in California. Cal OES holds this event in September very strategically because flooding is uh, supposed to happen in winter months and because wildfire season, very important to us, has been inching closer to winter months in recent years. More than 4,000 fires have burned in California so far this year. So the really a big reminder this morning is to prepare for them, not wait for them to happen. And the big thing you can do this morning is prepare with supplies like this, a supply kit that really holds up to 10 to 11 days of supplies. The most important thing here, emergency food and water stock up. There are some helpful tips for you to remember right now because California has the highest number of structures at extreme risk for burn loss. So Cal OES wants us to be prepared in case of a wildfire actually sparks near you. You should understand the area you live in. Is it a high risk fire zone? Ask yourself that question. You should also build a family plan and have some supplies ready for both emergency uh, scenarios like wildfire or a flooding. And lastly, exercise that family plan. People think that it's really just a government solution to this. You know, you dial 911 and you get all these assets. And in a big emergency, that maybe is not going to happen. There's going to be a time lag. So what we want people to do really is we want them to be a partner with us. You'll learn how to prepare for all kinds of emergencies during California's Preparedness Day tomorrow from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Old Sacramento. It's open to the public and it is free. Cal OES gave this little memo here to thousands of state workers letting them know about the event. But in the back here, very important, is a checklist of supplies you should have with you in case a scenario like this really does happen. If you didn't receive this, you can make one on your own. You can head to my Facebook page, Carlos Herrera News, for a full list. We'll send it back, send it back over to you. All right, thank you for that, Carlos. 538 right now. That is your Daily Blend, everybody. If you got something you want to share with us when you see it online, just use the hashtag MorningBlend.